my name is Iris and in this workshop you will have an introduction to puppetry. We're going to make a puppet out of brown paper. We're going to look at some techniques for operating a puppet. We're going to write a story and we'll also look at how to create your own performance with a puppet. So I'm pretty keen to get started. You're going to need a couple of things. First of all, you're going to need a roll of brown paper. Uh, brown paper works really well. This one is from Officeworks. However, if you don't have brown paper, you can use white paper as long as you can get a length of two meters and you'll need two pieces of two meters. You're also going to need some masking tape. Uh, now, other tape does work, however, masking tape works the best. Uh, you'll also need a tape measure to help you measure out the two meters and some scissors. And finally, you're going to need a notebook or some paper and some pencils to write your puppet story in. Okay, so our first step will be to roll out the paper. Use your tape measure to measure out two meters. So as I mentioned, you will need two pieces of two meters. So we're going to do that again. Okay, so once you've got two pieces of two meters, uh, you will need to scrunch your paper. Now it's really important to scrunch the paper lengthways, uh, not that way, so that you have what looks like two long ropes. So I'm gonna scrunch it this way, from one edge to the other. Okay, so I've nearly got a rope. You can take your time with this, but it should look like this. One long rope. Once you've done that, you'll need to do the same with your second piece. Make sure you're not rolling the paper. Uh, you want to be scrunching it, not rolling it. Okay, I've got two long pieces of scrunched up brown paper. So the next step is to make your neck joint. So what you need to do is you need to grab one of your pieces of paper and you need to fold it in half. So make sure that the bottom of the paper is even. I'm going to come back here and make what looks like the puppet's head and mark out where you would like your neck joint to be. So once you have your neck joint, you get some masking tape and tape it around the joint. And you've got your neck joint. Okay, in the next step, we're going to fold our second piece of paper. And we're going to wedge it in the first one. Like that. And what we're going to do next is we're going to make our shoulder joints. So, shoulders are around about that wide. So we will put some masking tape on this side and on this side to make the shoulder joints. I've got my masking tape and I'm just wrapping it around my first shoulder. Okay, so one thing to keep in mind is to make sure that your shoulders are symmetrical so that your puppet is not lopsided. I'm going to take some more masking tape and put it around my second shoulder joint. Okay, pretty good. The next step is to make the waist. You grab your puppet and take out the army bits on the outside and take the inside bits, pull them together like that and 
find where the waist might be, probably around about here. Okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to put some masking tape around the waist joint. In order to make our elbow joints, we want to pull the arms of the puppet out and fold them in roughly the same place. Then we'll do the same for our knees. So down about there. Here we have our kneeling puppet. Right. So what I might do while I'm here is I might make the wrist joints. If you just fold the wrist inwards, that will give you a little bit of a hand that you can articulate. We'll do the same with the second arm. Okay, so now that we've got um, the, pup the puppet's hands, we're going to also make some feet. So if you just fold your paper at the bottom of the legs to make some feet, the puppet is nearly ready. But at the end of this, your puppet should look something like this. To remember when operating a puppet is that your breath needs to match the breath of the puppet. So as you breathe, the puppet also takes a breath. And when you exhale, so does the puppet. Rule number two, keep your eyes on your puppet and the puppet's eyes fixed on whatever it is the puppet is looking at. So if the puppet is looking at the camera, you need to use your imagination to imagine where the puppet's eyes might be and then fix them on where you would like them to look at. If the puppet is looking at something on the ground, the head is going to come down. It's a good idea to practice just the breath and breathing with a puppet before you write a story or before you get into any complicated movement. Hopefully that's enough to get you moving your puppet. Please remember that you start with the simple movements first before getting to the more complex ones. And also these puppets are designed for up to three puppeteers. So you can actually have one person on the head and one hand, uh, a second person on the other hand, and a third person on the feet. So see if you can find a way to make that happen. When writing a puppet story, simplicity is your best friend. So keep your stories nice and simple. You can still follow the three-act structure with beginning, middle and end where there's a problem in the middle and you work your way towards, towards a solution. I find that in puppetry it works really well if your puppet is from the start in a situation or in a problem and then throughout the performance you resolve the problem. Finally, try and avoid using too many props. So one or two props is probably the maximum. And also for these puppets, it's best if you avoid dialogue altogether because they do not have a moving mouth. So I would work on physicality to tell your story. If your puppet has got a carrot as a prop, remember that you can hold the prop in your hand. The puppet might not see the prop the way that you and I do. So if it's a carrot, whilst you and I might try to bite the carrot, the puppet might not know what it is. So be creative with the way your puppet explores a prop. And that can actually be a part of your story. I'd like to give you some examples of puppet scenarios that you can practice with or you can make your own. One good scenario is where a puppet is asleep and there's a mosquito in the room keeping the puppet awake. So you need to think about how does the puppet respond and it also gives you plenty of room for improvisation. 
Another example is that maybe the puppet is waiting for someone anxiously and is pacing the room. Again, it's all in the physicality, how you express what the puppet is feeling and how the puppet is responding. Another good one is uh, the arrival of a letter with some devastating news or some happy news. And once again, it opens up a lot of room for improvisation of how the puppet responds to the situation. So these are the kind of stories that work really well with puppetry. In my experience, little simple activities like that give you a lot of play with your puppet and give you a lot of practice hours. So something that you can do for a long time whilst listening to some music in the background is the way that I enjoy to practice working with puppets. So when you're uh, performing for your family or friends, remember to keep a few things in mind. First of all, the visibility of your puppet is very important, so always stand back from your puppet and make sure that the puppet is in front. So for example, if I was doing a performance with the camera, I would ensure that the puppet is visible and I'm standing, I'm sitting behind the puppet. So everything that happens is focused on the puppet. The next thing that you need to think about is the placement of your props. So if you are using a prop, make sure that it's somewhere where you can easily reach it so you don't have to break momentum to get the prop. Another thing to keep in mind when doing a performance is lighting. Try and get a lamp that you can point directly at your puppet and also it helps if you can wear some darker clothes so that you can stay in the background and put your puppet in the foreground. And finally, I find that some background music that matches the emotion that you're trying to evoke with your puppet is really helpful. So use music, try not to use music that has lyrics because that can get in the way of what your story is about. So instrumental music is great, classical music is really good and find something that matches the emotion that you're working with. I've spent many hours playing with puppets and I really hope that this workshop has given you enough information and help to get you playing with puppets and get you thinking up stories and having fun. Right.